So, you're here to find out what it's like to have a, a heart attack. Well, we don't have much time because with heart attacks you'd never do. Well, let's start with the first symptom most people think of. Medicine is on the absolute cusp of a seismic revolution in health. The seismic revolution in health that comes about will come about when we in the profession have the will and the grit and the determination to share with the public what is the lifestyle and especially the nutritional literacy that will allow them to be the locus of control that's empowered to annihilate these common chronic killing diseases. Homer, I'm afraid you'll have to undergo a coronary bypass operation. Say it in English, Doc. You're going to need open heart surgery. Spare me your medical mumbo jumbo. We're going to cut you open and tinker with your ticker. Could you dumb it down a shade? Atherosclerosis is a life-threatening disease that may have begun to develop during childhood. This condition is a process in which deposits of fatty material called plaque build up inside the walls of arteries, reducing or completely blocking blood flow. What we recognize is that with every mouthful of typical Western food, that is America, European, and so forth, eating meat and dairy and oils, every time those foods pass your lips, you have an injury. Your body has an injury. Now it recovers probably from the injury by, by 90%. Then another injury, another recovery, 90%. Finally, these little 10% build up and build up and build up. This initiates an inflammatory response in which the endothelial cells at the damage site release chemicals that signal a call for help. Did you ever wonder how seemingly healthy people can have a heart attack? This may surprise you. Most heart attacks happen in people with no symptoms, in people whose arteries are less than 50% blocked. Here's how. Cholesterol can cause unstable bubbles or blisters of plaque to form in your arteries. These can be incredibly dangerous. Most are covered by a cap, but inflammation and stress can cause the cap to thin and rupture, resulting in a clot that blocks the flow of blood to the heart. Robbed of oxygen, the heart muscle can't function properly. Heart attack. And as the injury increases, we as physicians give that a name. It may be it will be hypertension or high blood pressure. Maybe the injury will be diabetes. Maybe the injury will be obesity. Maybe it'll be heart disease, maybe it'll be stroke, maybe it'll be Alzheimer's or dementia. And these things don't suddenly jump up on you at, out of the blue for somebody who's perfectly healthy and then they get sick. You work hard through all those previous decades to establish the background of chronic illness. Chronic illness just doesn't happen when you're 70. You really injure and injure and injure and injure and injure yourself with this food until it finally manifests itself as a disease. The best way to prevent a massive heart attack, to prevent atherosclerosis, is to start at step number one, blocking the buildup of cholesterol, which is a direct result of having too much LDL cholesterol in our bloodstream, which is a direct result of eating three things. Number one, saturated fat, found mostly in meat, dairy, and eggs. Number two, trans fat, found mostly in processed junk and animal products in the American diet. Number three, the consumption of cholesterol itself from meat, dairy, and especially eggs. I was scheduled for a triple bypass that Friday. I went out and found the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and called my cardiologist and said, I'm not doing this. Within six months, I had a normal stress test. My cholesterol was 114, LDL of 15. I felt better than I'd felt since I was... 35, I'm 57 years old. So I knew that the diet was working.
when you have the, the most common killing disease in Western civilization. For a patient to recognize the most important medicine is not the pills that they're taking, not the procedures that they had, none of which really are addressing. Oh good! Cancel the hem!